Hi, we're Maya and Emre, and in this Portofino, Italy travel guide, we'll take you beyond the bling to four insider experiences in Portofino, the Italian Riviera's most beloved and chic destination. Classy little Portofino is located on the Ligurian coast in the section of the Italian Riviera between Genoa and Cinque Terre. It's a few kilometers from Santa Margherita Ligure, which we covered in a recent travel vlog. Santa and Portofino paired together well as one of the best places to go in Liguria, if not in all of Italy. Portofino is the Liguria Riviera's picture-perfect fishing village turned luxury hotspot of designer shops, yachts, and Michelin restaurants. It's a tiny yet infamous place that can get so crowded, some of you have asked us if it's even worth the hype. We think so, especially if you also take advantage of Portofino's national park rising just behind the village. The Portofino Park is one of Liguria's best kept secrets, full of hidden gems. It's an entire peninsula of ancient trees, sheer cliffs, turquoise waters, amazing historic buildings, wildflowers, wild boars, birds, and mountain goats. So let's go beyond the bling and take you to four memorable experiences worthy of an Italy top 10 list. Let's start with a visit to Cervara Abbey. Perched on a seaside cliff above the road that runs between Portofino and Santa. The Abbey is a true stunner, totally worth the 200 meter walk up their long driveway. You must make a reservation for a tour by the Abbey guides. The tour begins in the lovely courtyard, then takes you through the chapel and the main floor of the Abbey. Benedictine monks established the Abbey in 1361. Many famous people have stayed here, including a pope in the 1300s and the king of France in the 1500s, who visited against his will and was imprisoned in the Abbey's tower. Where are we? Cervara Abbey. Absolutely beautiful. The garden is the best part of the visit. It's a truly memorable experience of regal, quiet gorgeousness on the Italian Riviera. This is the only Italian Renaissance style garden in Liguria. It was designed on the edge of the cliff to make you feel like you're on the prow of a ship with infinity views everywhere. In the springtime, the trellis of wisterias bloom, adding a delicious perfume and beautiful color to this already crazy beautiful garden of box hedges and topiaries. Take a tour when the sun is high so the turquoise color of the water really pops. What do you think of the tour? No comment? No comment. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so YouTube knows we're doing a good job. Tip number two, go up even higher than Cervara Abbey to enjoy the best views in Portofino. Tons of beautiful trails crisscross the leafy Portofino National Park leading to gobsmacking vistas. The trails are well marked, but we pick up a trail map at the tourist office just in case. We've been to all the panorama points. Here are our three favorite ones. The base zero loop path goes up into the hills directly from Portofino and cuts across the sheer cliff with even better sea vistas than what we experienced walking between villages in the Cinque Terre trail system. Only here you'll share your journey with far less people. Base zero has a heart stopping last bit before you get to the two lookout decks. When finally revealed, the view is awe inspiring with wide open sea and mountains popping with umbrella pines. Portofino is still nearby, hidden by the headland that we've just crossed to get here. Now we're going to go search for the best view facing up the coast to Camoyi, Genoa and beyond. We're headed for Paradise Point. You can glimpse the sea from between the trees most of the way. 
Yeah, there should be exclamation points and like five stars. Go this way. Must see Punto Panorama. <laughs> it's very low key. Don't skip. Don't miss it. For a short five minute descent, you get this spectacular view. San Rocco below and Camoli and on up the coast to Genoa. Sometimes you can see the snow on the French Maritime Alps. From here the loop continues to Semaforo Nuovo with another picture-perfect view and an Instagrammable bench for great pictures. Our new friends told us they come up here wearing headlamps and then watch the fireworks up and down the coast on New Year's Eve. If you look right below the bench, you'll see the naval batteries built in 1941 to fortify Genoa. As you finish the loop walking along the side of the cliff, you'll get more sea vistas and a final viewpoint. This one down to the monastery of San Fruttuoso, which is also our next tip. Taking the ferry to San Fruttuoso is one of our favorite experiences in this area. We've covered this beautiful location in our Camogli and Boliasco videos too, because we just can't get enough of the turquoise water and the stunning reveal of the abbey as you glide around the corner of the sheer cliffs towards the Pebble Beach. As usual, we're getting hungry, so tip number four is to have lunch at a historic olive mill named Mulino Gassetta. The Mulino is an ode to the past when the Portofino Peninsula produced olive oil for the surrounding communities. We like to start by car or by bus in the hamlet above Santa named Nozarigo. Whichever way you go, the walk takes you through the hillside neighborhoods of humble farms mixed with million dollar villas, all accessed by miniature roads. Farmers and big celebrities alike, everyone in this neighborhood travels small in three wheel apes, ATVs, and Vespas. Here's a little all terrain vehicle. People use this to get to their homes because there's actually quite a few homes on the trails that you can't access by car. That's why I have the, this to bring groceries and stuff in their little baskets and be able to access their homes other than by foot. At first we think, cute, decorations for Halloween, but that's not what's going on here. Instead of spiders, these clever nets trap falling fruit from the olive trees. Today, many families still harvest olives from their gardens and orchards each fall for their personal use and bioagricultural farms here have begun to revive the olive oil trade. Do I dare bite into one? Eat it. Eat, Eat it. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And here's the hidden gem. The Osteria has a casual ambiance with simple homestyle cooking. The short menu seems a little pricey, but understandable given its remote location. It feels like you've arrived at a Ligurian family meal in the backyard. And if you eat too much, there are beach chairs on the grass lawn to rest before you start back down the hill. For our return, we've chosen the cobblestone pathway through Olmi to Portofino, where we'll give you two more ideas of less crowded things to do closer to the village. This part of the walk is a real stunner with three different forks from Olmi back to Portofino through groomed neighborhoods besides gorgeous views of blue sky and the gulf. you can also return to Portofino by walking back to Santa and taking the ferry 15 minutes along the coast. 
sit on the top section or in the prow of the boat for the best views and the wind in your hair. When we dock in Portofino, we'll tell you our final two bonus tips. Go up to Brown Castle for the bird's eye view of Portofino Village and Marina. Leave behind the Instagram crowd at the Church of San Giorgio and keep following the signs to Brown Castle and Gardens. As you enter the property, flowering gardens look over on the Dolce & Gabbana mansion and beyond to the turquoise bay of Tigulio. Inside, colorful tiles decorate the halls and stairways. Castello Brown started in the 1400s as a naval fortification. In the late 1800s, the castle became a private residence and in 1961 was transferred to the town of Portofino as a public monument. Everywhere, windows filled with views that make you feel as if you're flying over in a helicopter. And now, on to our final tip. Make a left turn out the front gate of Brown Castle and keep going on the groomed walkway all the way to the end of the peninsula to the lighthouse and its tiny bar. The drinks and food are expensive, but the infinity view of the Mediterranean Sea is priceless. So there you have it, four amazing experiences and two extra tips that all take you beyond the bling of designer shops and yachts of Portofino to some of the best sites in Liguria and maybe even Italy. Bye for now from Portofino. Please join us next time for more travel vlogs on Italy, Spain, and France. And please subscribe if you like what we're doing. Ciao. Ciao.